Hey there, sorry here. Um, so I had somebody comment in my video yesterday um, concerning this particular trial. Um, you know, they were concerned because their their Knight of Grand Shelt was only EX1, their Starlight Elena was only EX1. Um, they were concerned that um, you know the, the that strategy wasn't wasn't going to work for them, and I, I totally understand. Um, so I I wanted to try a slightly different team. I uh, took Knights of Grand Shell out completely because, you know, I don't have an EX-1, so I, I don't really have a good representation of how to, you know, replicate an EX-1 Knights of Grand Shell. Um, you know, I also don't have an EX-1 Starlight Elena that I can I can use, um, but I, I will I will not use her, uh, her cooldown skill that she gets at EX-3 in this particular clear. Um, you know, that, that cooldown skill is really helpful in the previous clear because it comes with the demon killer for the party. Um, it does the sword in peril. Um, it gives her, you know, big amps to, uh, to light element. And so, you know, I want to do away with that. So this team is, uh, we're, we're mixing things up a little bit. Um, since this is for Ingus's crowns anyways, we, we might as well bring him along. Uh, my Ingus is only EX1. That's all you really need to follow this strategy. You do need access to his Brave Shift form, uh, cause we are going to use that. That's going to be very, very helpful. Um, and, and Ingus is actually, he's, he's pretty crucial for this strategy in particular. So if you don't have an Ingus, you're not going to be able to follow this one. Uh, Starlight Elena is going to carry the fight for us for the most part. Um, but I think even at EX1, uh, she should be just fine. As long as you have her intrinsic ability. That's what makes her so powerful. Not necessarily her EX levels. Those those don't matter as much to her. Um, an EX1 Starlight Elena will be just fine as long as you have that intrinsic ability hidden powers. All right, so here's the team. Um, we're going to go over the gear because the gear is uh, going to be slightly different for um, for Sice. I actually geared Sice for some damage. Uh, Ingus obviously wasn't in my previous clear. So let's go over this again. Once again, make sure you set Galuf to your leader because he has a 200% attack and mag leader skill for Blessing of the Crystals category units. And that's pretty much all the units that are allowed into this fight are Blessings of Crystals. So make sure uh, Galif is your, your leader for this fight for that, that nice leader skill. Just like in my previous clear, he is built for full evade. Um, he is a uh, evade provoke unit. Pretty sure he should have an 800. Yeah, he's got like 160% innate provoke, 100% evasion. Um, so Durandal is there to help out with that. Sea Dragon, Tulian's card, really great. That basically maxes out everything on evasion and provoke form. The rest of it can just be for elemental resists. Um, so I was mistaken in my, in my previous video. Um, there is no light imperil on uh, on Galif at, at any point. Um, it's just a fire imperil. It's a big. 300% fire in peril, um, and so you don't have to worry about um, going crazy on light element like I did. He, he has a lot of innate light resistance anyways, uh, but just focus on making sure you have at least 300% fire resist on your build, all right? Otherwise, he is pretty much good to go. Um, <clears throat> So Starlight Elena, again, you know, I, I'm not going crazy on the, the build here. I know she is EX3. Obviously, if yours is EX1 or EX2, her stats might be lower. That's fine. It, it's really okay. Um, you know, her stats might go down to, like, 8,000 attack and mag. You, you're still going to get it done. So this team is going to do a fair bit of, of overkill um, to, to get this one done. Pretty much the same gear. The only thing I switched out is, you know, I did that, um, I, I did that trial for the upgraded... Uh, class zero summer uniform and if you upgrade it to plus two it gives you 74 uh, attack and mag which is kind of nice that's it's ne it's nicer than Kamari's uniform which I was using on my Elena uh, in, in my video yesterday red hellebore still there because it's great uh, with the upgrades same with the magic control rings um, because they help get Sarla Elena up to 400% TDW which is really nice uh, then you just make sure she's capped up on her demon killers. Um, I switched out the the limited card that I had on my Elena in yesterday's vid and went ahead and put in uh, Fryevias. And then just make sure hidden power is in there. This is the this is the key critical thing for your Starlight Elena. Make sure hidden power is equipped to her, and, and she will she will just hit like a truck, no matter what her EX level is. All right. Uh, so she should be loaded up on demon. Yeah, 300% demon killer, ready to rock and roll. Um, regular Elena, we don't care. Her de damage is irrelevant. She's just here as a chain slave. She's going to be our demon killer buffer. So we're going to use her Brave Shift uh, LB for the demon killer buffer for the party. 
All right. Um, and we're going to use her uh, prism, piercing prism for the sword and peril. Okay, so that way we're not relying on Starlight Elena's EX3 uh, cooldown ability at all. All right, I honestly didn't really care about it. The only things you want to make sure you have are Call of the Wild. All right, because uh, we need to get her LB filled up by turn two to use um, to use that brave shifted LB. So Call of the Wild and Advanced Weaponry um, that just gives her some some quick LB, uh, LB fill on turn one. We're then going to shift her. Call of the Wild is there again, so she basically double dips on turn one with that big LB fill. Uh, Luminous clothes uh, are, are nice because they give you eight LB fill per turn. Come on, yep. Um, and then Ch uh, Chocobo Feather Protection also does two LB fill. So she's filled up on LB fill per turn as well. She should have her LB filled by turn two, no problem. I have not had any instances where it has not been filled up with this build. Ingus, so Ingus is actually gonna deal some damage here. Um, I will say, so this is going up against level four. So at this point, you should have three silver crowns already. And so what I have done is I have put two silver crowns into this ability, all right, um, which makes his LB do an 88% defense break, 89% spirit break, and then does a 145% imperil to fire, water, wind, and earth, we're, we're going to be using three of those elements in this fight. We're going to be using fire, water, and wind in this fight. And then it does an area effect for all four of those elements. Very, very nice, all right? Uh, the damage is kind of whatever. Um, it's more just for the imperils and for those bigger breaks, uh, as well as the area effect that does the imperils by 30% to all four of those elements. Crucial, crucial. So make sure you put two crowns into that. And then I put one crown into this ability on his normal form um, which gives him a nice boost to his black magic abilities all right um you you know uh if it's fully you know once it's fully crowned it's an even bigger damage boost but the more critical thing is the imperils the imperil fields and the bigger breaks that is way more critical than doing the the damage boost because that only improves uh, Ingus's damage. We want to improve everybody's damage before we focus on Ingus. All right, so that's why I did that. So two crowns in the Brave Shift, one crown in a normal form. You're good to go. Uh, in his normal form, he is wielding a sword so that we can take care, uh, take advantage of the sword in peril. Uh, just some basic gear here. Memory chip gives him a chain cap boost. Um, uh, it, I didn't even finish uh, gearing him. Do it, is that because I didn't need to? Yeah, he hits Demon Killer innately, so I didn't even really need to bother gearing, uh, finish gearing him. You could put like Esper stats, you know, Ihana, TMR, whatever, in there. Um, Offerings of the Maiden because that's a free card you can get in the shop. In his Brave Shift form, um, I did give him, give him uh, a two-handed uh, instrument because he can. Um, you know, he likes instruments in his Brave Shift form, so I gave him Fabled Vi Violin. You don't have to, just whatever you know, whatever strong uh, magic instrument you might have, or if you have a really strong magic dagger, like we're not using any kind of weapon in perils here in this form, so, so don't worry about it. Otherwise, pretty much the same gear. Um, takes a little bit more to get him all, all fully geared up with LB damage, because we are, we do want to, yeah, he's not even full LB damage. That's okay. Um, Demon killers in there, make sure he's maxed out on those. Again, offerings of the maiden. Um, I probably could give him some LB damage somewhere. I tell you what, let's do, uh, let's do Yuna's, uh, STMR. There it is, Yuna's necklace. Yep, um, I'll just take, I'll take this one, and that should get him full LB damage. There we go. All right, great. So that way we're just making sure we've got everything maxed out for him, and he's ready to go. All right, um, Sice. So I actually geared Sice for some damage, um, I gave her her STMR, even though we don't have a spear in peril, you could give her like Fryevia's TMR to um, allow her to equip swords, but it does make her a little more difficult to build. She loses some flat stats. So I just opted to stay with the spear just for, for ease of building. Um, she does have a Magister's Ring. Um, you know, w whatever you have to give her uh, some, some chain cap boost if you don't have a Magister's Ring is fine. Um, and then this gear is just to ramp up her attack, make sure she has LB damage. That's what Balthier's Clothes and Griever are doing there to make sure she caps her LB damage. 
Um, and then uh, make sure she's got demon killers. She's a little bit tough to build for demon killers. She has no innate demon killer. So she does take quite a bit. So she's got Diabolos Esper, Demon Eater Sense, Force Mysterion, and there you go. Um, I gave her Chizuru's card just as like a budget card. Obviously, if you have a better vision card, throw that in there for her. Okay, and she is capped on everything. Yep, 300 demon, 300 LB damage ready to go um so she's, she is going to use her slb on turn three for a big burst but then she's just going to be chaining with with ingus uh doing quad bolting strike with ingus on turns uh four and five to finish out the fight and that's all you need all right so let's get in here and let's see how we do this, this is going to be a five turn clear and uh, unless i get lucky in variants you know um usually on turn four i'm like i'm somewhere around five percent hp um with this team um, hopefully I don't kill the boss on turn 5, but if I do, it's fine. You just reload and repeat on turn 5 anyway. So, let's get in there, see how we get this done. Alright, so, um, first things first, Elena is going to shift. Alright, and she is going to do Luminous Speed, Crystal Refrag for the 100% elemental resist across the board. That way nobody takes any magic damage. Blessing of the Azure Crystal for the buffs and break resists. Again, I don't know if the boss breaks, but, you know, why not? Um, Galath is going to do... Uh, he's going to do Swarm Protection and then double Balawar Tactics. That's to help fill up Elena's LB. Alright, Ingus is going to do Triple. He's going to do In Fire and In Water -a. Okay, that's to imbue the party with fire and water with a 20%, I think it's a 20% amp, maybe 25%, whatever. It's to Im imbue everybody with fire and water. Uh, Sice is going to go wind, all right, um, but she'll also be imbued with fire and water, okay? And this is just so that everyone is, is imbued, and when we do our chains, there's no issue with, like, you know, chains being slow to ramp up. It'll increase our chain speed. You know, it, it, it'll just be, it makes the fight go uh, a lot, a lot smoother. And then the last action is fill LB so that he can do his LB next turn. All right, Sice is going to quad. She's going to do Reaping Grudge, Reaping Wind, and then double Moxie Death. Starlight Elena will just do Stella Maris and double Gemini. So I'm ignoring Celestial Brilliance because I'm going to assume that yours is not EX3. Uh, and does not have access to Celestial Brilliance. So we'll just do Stella Maris, Double Gemini. Um, now let's just do a little chip damage. The, the, the timing sucks because uh, Sice is quad casting, Starlight is... So you just kind of have to like eyeball it. So I'll do um, Sice, and then um, like a second later I hit Elena. There'll be a little bit of change. It's not going to be perfect yet. You know, just like 3%, whatever. Just to do a little chip damage. Every little bit counts. Um, especially if you're struggling to hit that 5 turn limit. All right, so now Ingus is going to shift to the Brave Shift and do his Brave Shift at LB. All right, Starlight Elena will do Double Gemini, Star Supernova. Sice is going to do Quad. She'll do Moxie Defense, the, the unlocked version, uh, three times, and then end with You're Dead so she can prepare to do her SLB next turn. Elena will do... Hmm... That's fantastic. All right, so, of course, like the one time. It looks like she only needs a little bit. That's okay. We're going to have um, Galath go ahead and fill that up. And then Galath will just entrust over to Ingus next turn. All right, Elena does her Brave Shift at LB for the Demon Killer buff. So now everybody has a 150% Demon Killer buff ready to go. Okay, looking good. All right, so Ingus goes first to do the bigger breaks and the Imperial Fields, followed by Starlight Elena and Sice. And it's, it's all triple bolting strikes, so it all should chain nicely. Okay, should do a little chunk of damage, like 20, 25%, something like that. Yeah, there we go. Pretty typical. All right, 
So as you can see, the team is in absolutely no danger of dying. We will take zero damage with this team and this strategy. All right, Sice is ready for the SLB. Uh, Elena just has to do Triple Gemini. Um, Ingus is going to come back to normal. And Galif is going to entrust over to Ingus. So Ingus can do his normal form LB. This is to do the mod boost to all of his magic skills. All right, Elena is now going to come back. All right, she's going to do Piercing Prism first, Blade of Salvation, Crystal Refract. Okay, so Elena goes first, followed by uh, Sice and Starlight Elena. Okay. There we go. Looking good. All right, and now Ingus is going to join... Uh, join in with the damage and you know we should be we should be golden from here on out Galif can just guard Elena will once again just chain Play of salvation uh, piercing prism okay um, and we're gonna quad fire all right everyone is imbued with fire so that's that's really nice um, she'll do quad moxie defense Elena just does her usual triple gem and I. All right. And yeah, we should be good. Okay. So let's do it. Oh, I killed. <laughs> I killed him on, on turn four. Darn. All right. Um, anyways, as you can see, uh, that gets it done in four turns. If you have to go to turn five, you literally just hit reload and repeat. You will want to shift um, your original Elena back to uh, Bray Shift Worm and reapply the Demon Killer buff. But then, yeah, that's pretty much it. Everyone just takes it home from there. Um, and yeah, there you go. You can see uh, Elena once again sort of uh, carrying the load, but Ingus. For, for only doing damage on like one turn, he did 3 billion damage on that one turn. So uh, there you go. Um, so obviously he would contribute another like 3.5 billion on the following turn, which um, should easily kill the boss, right? Um, and, and Sice just kind of like, you know, doing some extra chip damage to make sure you get across the line but anyways uh that's just another way to get this one done that doesn't require knights of grand shelt um doesn't require ex3 starlight elena does require red mage ingus though um at least ex1 obviously if your ingus is ex2 you could probably get get away with doing things a little bit quicker but um yeah so hopefully this was helpful to you guys that's an all missions clear for you um let me know in the comments below if there's anything else you guys would like me to try and because uh, i i honestly don't have anything else to do this week so um let me know and i will see you on the other side